Our Father, we are grateful to you again for the opportunity and privilege that we have to look into the perfect law of liberty. We ask that in mercy it will please you to speak to us in ways that we will understand and grant that our hearts will not be difficult for you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let me uh, thank the bishop who graciously approved my being here and also to thank my brother venerable um, the archdeacon in the cathedral here who graciously extended an invitation for me to be here we have a brief time this morning and i'd like you to please pay very close attention to some of the issues uh, indeed all the issues that i believe god in mercy we want to drop upon our lives we began a journey uh, on Thursday uh, looking at some very critical issues that it will not be possible for us to go back and recapture all of the things that have been said um, but just to to do a very brief summary which even as a summary is not detailed. We read, we've been looking at Jeremiah 18, where the Lord began to say to Jeremiah to go to the house of the potter and that he was going to speak to him there. And Jeremiah did. When he got there, the Bible said he met the potter walking on the wheel and he was designing a vessel. And when he finished making the vessel, the potter decided that this vessel did not turn out the way I had wanted. Now, that's a very serious instruction for us. Because apart from the potter himself, no other person knew exactly the kind of pot or vessel that the potter wanted to make. It was only the potter that decided that this vessel that came out was not my original intention. This is not what I desired to make. Every other person who was observing from outside, maybe including Jeremiah, would have been surprised. Maybe he would have been celebrating and said, what a wonderful vessel that has turned out. And yet, the porter himself is saying, what a disappointment. This is not what I intended to do it became clear to us that it would be very wrong for you to be celebrating yourself. It became very wrong for us as we saw clearly from the word of God that a man that is basking in the euphoria that you know, people say I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual, you are not being wise. The only correct place to collect your report card is from the potter. And I need to ask you what you have become in the hands of God. Was it what God intended? Excuse me, uncle. The way I see you shout at your wife and do like this, I say, I will show you I'm a man. Is that the kind of vessel that Jesus wanted to make of you? Excuse me, sister. Because your husband said there's much salt in the soup for three days, you have not talked to him. And your singing chorus is in the kitchen. You're a disappointment to heaven. Let me ask you, is that the kind of vessel that Jesus wanted to make of you. Eh? Because of one rapper, when your husband comes in the night, he says, eh, and you didn't, eh, 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 you are coming now. You are coming now. Did you not read your Bible? The Bible says, refuse not one another, except it be by consent. Is it not in your own Bible? And you are saying, what will you give me to come into my body? Only prostitutes do that. Prostitutes say, what will you give me to have access to my body? The only reason do you want me to tell you the truth? Mama, should I speak the truth? A woman who is doing that, the only, reason, the only explanation is that the other one is a prostitute outside. You are a prostitute inside. There is a matter in our hands. Even as a preacher, 
I am not satisfied that you are standing and say, hey, we thank God for Brother Peak. Hey, we thank God for Brother Peak. No. I need to go and collect my report card. From who? From the porter. You were not there when I was called. You don't know the mandate heaven gave me. You don't know the grace I am carrying. While you're celebrating me, heaven may be saying, what a waster. He's wasting the grace we have invested upon his life. And you're celebrating. Because somebody say, hey, we thank God. You are an ESCO in a women fellowship. You are an ESCO. ESCO my foot. I want you to go back to the porter and collect your report card. Find out. You may actually be here and we think you're a Christian, but your name is not in the book of life. You come to church. In fact, when you want to do Thanksgiving, you say, yes, venerable, what do we want to do? What is the project of the church? And then you do it and put your name because you think you own the church of God. Sister, brother, go and collect your report card. We moved from there. We discovered that when the porter said, this clay, this that I formed in my hands into a vessel, this vessel did not turn out as I intended. This is not the design that I wanted. For him to make the, the, the clay into another vessel, the vessel that he desired, the clay had to be completely surrendered in the hands of the potter. And let me ask you, are you surrendered in the hands of Jesus? Does he have full control over your life? We also saw that the potter was at liberty to do whatever he wanted to do. And he said, I will make it into another vessel. And he did. And God began to say to Jeremiah, You see your life? You see your people? Can't I do like this potter? This kind of Christianity that they are teaching you. He said, decide what you want to be and go to God and say, yes, make me this. I didn't see it in the Bible. They are deceiving you. They call it faith. They say you should claim it. It's an affront on God. Anytime Jesus calls a man, there's something he normally says. He says, you, follow me. I will make you. Uh, he decides what to make you. You follow me. I will make you. We are teaching people now to say, This is Jesus, this is what I want to be. You better make me this now. Some of you are even feeling good. You feel that Jesus is even lucky that you're serving him. Who are you? Who are you? Do you know that minus me, God cannot be stranded? Eh? If I refuse to do what he has called me to do, he is capable of raising somebody who can do it ten times better than me. It's only a privilege that I'm standing here. I am begging you, go and collect your report card. From where? From the porter. Yesterday, we saw Abraham. Time we fell us to check. But it also became an instruction for us. When you read in Genesis 12, the Bible said, the Lord had said to Abraham, so, which means he had talked to him before. Leave your people. Go here, go here, go there. I will show you where you're going and all of that. And Abraham and Terah, his father, Terah apparently also picked up that instruction and he collected Abraham and the rest of them and they left that they were going to the land of Canaan. But when they got to Haran, they settled there. Haran and Canaan, they are not the same thing. Are you listening to me? And I was telling them that joke and joke, they're not be the same thing. Joke, na joke. Joke, na person name. The same spelling, but they don't mean the same thing. Canaan and Haran, they don't mean the same thing. But if you ask the people who were in awe of the Chaldeans when they left, they say, where is Abraham now? Where would they tell you? They say, Canaan, he has gone to Canaan. Only that he has stopped. Where? In Haran. 
You know there are some of your neighbors. They hear you sing choruses and they conclude that you're a Christian. They don't know that you're a wicked woman inside. Wicked. I don't know where we go pick that kind of thing. Every elderly woman is a witch, but your mother is not a witch. Now only your mother-in-law be witch. You sing choruses, but your mother-in-law cannot come to your house. You say, no, 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 no. She's a witch. She cannot touch my children. Now something they worry you. Then do you something. And I've never seen, even if my man are witch, light and darkness, which one they run from each other? We kind Jesus you meet where they fear wish like this. But you, when they maltreat your mother in law, so no problem. May Jesus tarry. I know the prayer where they pray. She be the born children. Your picking wife go put pepper for your eye. For whatsoever a man sows. Now, so if you, not to me, talk am in the Bible. Today we want to press ahead because our time is very short. I just want to read a little story. I, we will not be able to study it in detail. I know you know the story, but I'll, I'll read it all the same and just highlight a few things and I'll be asking us to pray. In Luke chapter 15, uh, we want to see, because when the potter decided to begin to make, we saw a life that was surrendered to him to make. We looked at the life of Abraham yesterday when he eventually decided to obey and he moved to the land of Canaan and he began to do what God wanted for him to do. He began to build altars. We looked at the matter of building altars very seriously yesterday. We cannot do all of that. I don't know whether they recorded the message. If they did, maybe you can get that so you can get the true picture of everything. But in Luke 15, look at verse 11. Then he said, are you in verse 11? If you have seen Luke 15, can you say, praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in, what, in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pork that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to, and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Then he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. The word of the Lord. Now I'm sure that you know the story. Uh, you know it. So we won't be able to read the entire thing, including the reaction of the elder brother, who I don't know who is better. I don't know who is better. Because this elder brother also, maybe when God gives us an opportunity, we can look at it, you'll see that many of us are like him. He said, this is your son. When the boy came back, he said, this is your son, not my brother. This is your son. Wasted all your goods. Didn't give me anything. This one that wasted all your goods with prostitutes. Came. I said, uh-uh. Ah, ah. So this boy knew where his younger brother was. He knew what he was doing. Abby, how did he know he wasted the goods with, with prostitutes? He got information. And every day he saw the fact, where my chair? I tell him, I said, uh, now, no, bring my share. Sorry, you're not used to this kind of uh, preaching in the cathedral, ba? Every day, now, so Baba sit down with a hand like this. They say, Baba, food already. He say, mm, 
Now food owner, they talk now. Say, we made your favorite meal. Say, mm. who knows whether my boy don't eat. This elder brother saw the father in pain. You can leave it here, no problem. He saw the father in pain. And he knew. Why didn't he go to look for his younger brother? To end the pain in the heart of the brother. Uh, in the father. I know you will say, eh, now where for that boy? Yo? Hey. How many of you are born again here? You come to all night and the whole night you're praying for breakthrough. Breakthrough. Bank job. Job for oil company. Make my picking work there. And there are relations of yours that are not born again. You are like the elder brother. You can claim things. You can claim souls. Jesus said, go ye. We practice, come ye. How many of you who say you are Christian, you come here and sing choruses and lift up your hands. In the last three months, have you won a soul for the Lord? In the last one year, how many people are standing in the kingdom because of you? You can claim kingdom promises, but you cannot perform kingdom responsibilities. You are a disgrace to Jesus. But, you know, the elder brother is not my focus this, this morning. He's the younger brother. That heaven provided an opportunity for this man to be molded in the hands of the potter. He looked around. The only thing that interested him in the potter's house were goods. Things. <laughs> there are many of you who come to church. The only interest you have is what you can get from Jesus, not what Jesus can do with you. Even when you give God, you pay your tithe. Here are some of you, you will go back and be praying. Say, Father, I have paid my tithe. 100% must come back. This is a God owe you. Jesus, now your classmate. I don't give you 100 naira now. I they expect 1,000. It is a God and Kalu Kalu business. It's because you don't even understand the principle of tithing. I don't have time to teach about tithing, but I believe that tithe is not, is not God's ideal for his child. That may shock you. Tithe is not God's ideal. It's just because of our disobedience, the little we can afford to give. God says, so okay, even the 10% bring. God's ideal is for you to understand first the ownership dimension. That God owns you and owns everything in your hands. And you ought to be asking him, what you have put in my hands, how do I use it? When God began to teach some of us that kind of principle, it was... I say, uh-uh. So, now, so it be, say yes. So, you may think that, oh, <laughs> he's a, why is he talking like that? It's because he's working, he's a professor. Even my salary, there was a month. <laughs> Sometimes God does some strange things. He said, this is your salary that is coming. Uh, I want to use it. And I'm not talking about 10%. I'm talking about everything. And I say, come, it will go like that. Does God not know that I have a wife and children? He knows. I went to preach somewhere a few years ago. And there were needs in the house before I left. When I finished, they gave me an envelope. And God permitted me to take it. Because it's not every place that he will even permit you to take. He permitted me to take it. And as we were coming back, one of the disciples was driving. I was saying, ah, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I was already, I said, Ty, I'll tell my wife, we will solve this need with this money. And the, and the Holy Spirit rebuked me. I said, when did you start this? I said, I'm sorry, sir. He said, have you asked me, the owner of the money, what I want to do with my money? Ah, I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, which kind of mumu they worry me so? I'm sorry. So I said, Lord, so what do you want to do with this money? Say, it's not your money. There's a pastor in the city of Joss. He's not an Anglican priest. He said, this money in your hands is for him. There's a need in his life. I want to settle with it. I said, finish. So we got to just that evening. The next morning, I was invigilating an exam. So I went to the university. 
I carried the money, put it in my bag, dropped my bag in my office and went to invigilate the exam. I said, after the exam, I was going to go and look for that pastor. While I was invigilating, my phone rang. So I decided to pick it. It was that pastor. He said, brother, are you in town? I said, yes, I'm in town. He said, oh, I want to see you. I said, what a coincidence. I also wanted to see you. But I'm in the office now. He said, can I come and meet you there? I said, please come. I'm in the university. So I described where I was and he came. So I stood by the door like this so I can be looking at all those children that their eyes, they do mwah, 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 mwah. Maybe they don't cheat. Some of you are teachers and you allow children to, in fact, some of you send your children to uh, magic centers. You are a disgrace to Jesus. If they help the king, we don't sabi anything. Make you read medicine and they pray. May they help and make it pass. Make you go lie down, make it operate you. Embano. So when he came, he said, Ah, bro, you said you wanted to see me. I said, No, you called first. I will still tell you why I wanted to see you. But can you tell me what, why you wanted to see me? He said, Ah, brother, he had three children. He said, Did he say last week or so? He said, they drove my children away because of school fees. I've not paid their school fees. So I said, ah, ah. In my heart, I said, no wonder. So I said, how much is the school fees for the three children? He mentioned the amount. That was the exact amount in the envelope they gave me. So I said, bro, you know I said I wanted to see you too. He said, yes. Then I narrated what happened. That man didn't remember we were outside. People were passing on the corridor in the university. He knelt down there, raised his hand. He said, God, now so you be. So I said, wait, your money. He said, because it's not my money. Your money is in my office. So I ran there, collected the money, and gave to him. He said, go and pay the children's school fees. That's what Baba said. I was the one who went to preach. It's because you don't understand. That's why you think that everything that is in your hands, it belongs to you. And your cousin's child could not register for work. But I see you, yeah, yeah, man, in the evening. Carry girl, go buy suya for a man, five alive and ten are dead. You will spend five thousand one evening to buy suya and five alive for one girl. Say, just for me, say chicken change. Chicken change. If not to mumu, they worry you. But it's all right. This young man, ah, I delude my time. Do I still have up to 10 minutes? Uh -uh, wait, I beg. I'm a man under authority. This man, the father was alive. Sorry, then they move around. Have you move around? Praise the Lord. The father was alive. The porter was available. Everything that was going on in that compound, nothing interested this boy. He was only looking at goods. Like you come to church, Jesus, house rent. I want to build my own house. I want to buy a car. I want to send my picking, go, uh, Akata. May go, may go read there. things. Nobody wants to find out what is in the heart of Jesus. Nobody's interested to know what is aching his heart. Nobody's interested in the souls that are not born again. Souls that are misbehaving. The boy looked around and he said to his father, say, should I be your picking? Say yes. So give me my, the goods that pertain to me. I want to claim what belongs to me. He wasn't claiming what belongs to somebody else. But he wanted to claim what belongs to him. I see the way you can say, I'm a child of God. Yes, Father. Yeah. And you'll be quoting all those promises. He said, you're a faithful God. You said this. Are you faithful to the faithful God? 
The boy claimed all of those things. And the father, you know, that's one of the things that makes me fear God. The father knew that this boy was not doing what was right. But he's a righteous father. He says, my son. He wants to collect what belongs to him prematurely, unformed. He can't handle it, but he wants to collect it. He says, okay, you want it? Say yes. You want it? Say yes, all right. Give him what belongs to him. And the boy thought he had succeeded. There are certain prayers you are praying that God has not answered. I wish you would understand and don't insist. One prayer where I go pray for you. May God no give you, take, leave me alone. Not be better to you. You know, you get her speaking, go worry him, papa or him, mama. He go say, take, leave me alone. But <laughs> that thing, that kind take, leave me alone. I don't want her. Papa say, you want time? Say, yeah, you want time? He said, give her. So he collected all the goods. I can imagine they stored it on one side. All the cattle and everything that belonged to him. When he sits down like this, he go cross leg. Back out. <laughs> he go tell the servant, I say, may nobody play near this guy, this, this one. Oh. No, just play near here and I'm my own. And that time, he go collect guy name. All in friends, they hail her. They call on one guy named Gorezan like, like this. He said, Nah, me. Say, one try. And the form Mugu now. I know it didn't belong to me. You see all those things there? Ah! In friends, go tell us, oh boy, we go rock, die. We go shake this town. We go paint and red. Mumu. And the father was, he knew all of these things. He kept quiet. Until the day the boy gathered everything and took his own journey to a far country. I discovered that companions for sin are not difficult to find. They're always around you. Look, if you're looking for somebody to fornicate with, they are not far to find. In fact, there are some girls that are as cheap as one plate of rice. They will spread leg for you. But you'll be digging your grave. The Bible said the man who commits adultery with a woman is not wise. It's not wise. Nothing destroys a man like unfaithfulness. Even an unmarried boy, an unmarried girl, it's a disgrace. It destroys your future. It's something you shouldn't play near. The boy collected everything. They were hailing him. All the girls around him. He go pack two like this, hold two like this. Say, but he said, you know, I just love you. Say, yes, I know. Yes, I know. Love and one thing. That kind of love that is predicated upon things. It can't last. Well, you know the story because of our time. They wasted the goods. And he finished. The trouble with collecting things without being formed in the hands of the potter is that everything you collect without proper formation will finish. Maybe I should point out something to you. Eh? In verse 12, when he said to the father to give him, the Bible says, so his father divided to them his livelihood. Are you carrying King James Version? Eh? Please look at, look at the Bible. What does the Bible say the father divided unto them? Nobody is answering me now. Eh? Old King James say he's living. New King James say his livelihood. You're not understanding me all. Are you following me? I know some translations will say goods. If you check it, sister, if you check it from old King James or new King James, he say his living or his livelihood. What the young man did not know is that 
all the things he was collecting are a product of the father's life. Father's living. Father's livelihood. It is the life It is the life of the father that produced those goods. What he did not understand is that remove those things from the presence of the father, from the life of the father, it will finish. It can't last. Because it does not have the capacity of reproduction. Kai, are you following me? It is the father's living. What you don't understand is that it is the life of Christ in us that produces the things you're running after. When you collect the goods without collecting the life, it will finish. You will waste it because you don't have the capacity to reproduce them. On your own, you cannot reproduce it. It is the father's life. So if a man actually wanted to collect goods, what he should be crying for is to first collect what from the father? Life. You hear John 1, 4 say, In him, that is in Christ, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. It is the life that the life produced that now shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. We quickly want to catch the light. We quickly want to beam the light. But what produces the light is what? Life. If you don't catch life, you cannot have light. Another verse says, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light we shall see light. Let me move on so I can quickly round off. This man, this young man just collected the goods and he went. He finished. You know the rest of the story. How he began to be in want. Huh. Without the life of Jesus. Without a, allowing the potter to mold you into the vessel that he has decided and intended for you to be. <laughs> you will be in want. You will be in want. And I'm praying that you will not be realizing it when it's too late. When sense entered into him, he said, uh-uh, even servants in my father's compound, servants who, in the potter's house, they have enough to eat, they can even spare. So I discovered that actually, running after things is a disgrace for my father. For me, to be pursuing things is a disgrace for my father because the things I am pursuing, even servants, have enough and they give out. If money, car, house, is all you can collect from Jesus, it's a disgrace. Even servants can give out that. You're saying, uh, yes, I thank God, I'm a Christian, I want to sh I'm a king's kid, I'm a king. And you think that it is because it is when you look at the car that you're driving, you say, yes, you're making success. Say, see the house that I'm living in. God is with me. Now lie. Do you know Muslims build citadels? They build fantastic houses. True or false? Unbelievers, don't they drive good cars? If car is all that brings you to Jesus, you don't need to come. Servants give out that. But there's something servants cannot give out. And the boy said, no. I will return to my father. He recognized that the source of the goods is the father. Oh, I wish that I allowed myself to be molded in the potter's hands. I broke away and ran. So he came. But as I close, I want to point out something. Each time I remember it, he humbles me and I'm saying, God, I beg, I beg, no let Mumu worry me. No let Mumu keep you. 
when the father saw the boy and ran to him so that we can close the things the father said I say what I want you to look at what the father said he said bring that is uh, verse 22 he said but the father said to his servants bring out the best robe and put it on him I say what let me ask you, the goods that this boy collected, do you think there were no robes inside? Eh? Didn't this boy collect robes? Ashe, the best robe is still in Baba's wardrobe. Whatever you're collecting from the hands of the potter, outside the potter's life, it's useless. It's not the best. The best is still in Baba's wardrobe. I said, what? So all this, all the one that he was wearing, say, I don't spoot, dressed to kill. I said they were useless. The best robe was still in Baba's wardrobe. And he said, please, put a ring on his hand. My sign of authority. Put it in his hands. I said, but I thought he was your son. <laughs> I discovered that a man who has not submitted to be completely made, a man who has not been made, a vessel not properly formed by the potter, the potter does not put his stamp of authority upon him. I can't deal with that in details. But he said, bring our sandals. I hope you know. All this in younger way they do. Now bare feet you take the work out. If you are not carrying the life of Christ in you. As I call you to prayer because of our time. I simply want to ask you. Have you collected goods from our father? And you don't go. You are quoting scripture when you are living a life of unrighteousness. You are quoting scripture, young girl. Maybe because of uh, Venerable Whisker, we, we talk. When you're coming to church, you dress well. Monday to Saturday or Friday, when we see you on campus, you're wearing, come and see you, come and see. Have you collected goods outside the potter's hand? Have you collected things without collecting the life of the potter. Are you here? And you're not born again. You're not sure that if the trumpet sounds now, you will make it to heaven. When we talk, you say, I've been a member of the cathedral since even before the, the present bishop. Who wants to know that? Who wants to know your history? There's a very simple question to ask. Is your name in the book of life? That's the first category that will answer a question very shortly now. The second I'll be asking you. We may think that you're all right. You're a Christian. We see you in church. Even though I guarantee you that midweek, we are not half of this. Sunday, Sunday, there are praying Christians. It's my work, it's my work. Where are you? That you cannot be in fellowship. Maybe you say, yes, you're a Christian. That's our conclusion. But you may need to go, as the Holy Spirit is telling you, collect your report card from me. You're a wicked person inside. Go to the port and collect your report card. Maybe you're here for the last three, four days. You have not had quiet time. You're here for the past three days. There's no relationship between you and your husband. You're on short wave. Good morning, morning. What will you eat? Anything. Where are you going? Why do you want to know? When are you coming back? Anytime. Short wave. The salt, here. Short wave. But when we reach church, 
In fact, as you were entering, you saw Venerable Whisker. And he was saying, my dear, my dear, Venerable is greeting you. For three days, they never talk. Let me tell somebody, say, collect your report card from the porter this morning. Bow your heads, let's pray. Very simple. Two categories of people. If you permit me, I will say camera turn off because sometimes people are, even though it's not a disgrace to give your life to Jesus, but I just want to encourage you. If you're here, you're not sure that if the trumpet were to sound now, you make it to have all eyes closed, please pray your own prayer. Can you lift up your hand where you are? I want to pray with you. Breathe on me, breast of God. Fill me with life anew. That I may love what thou dost love. And do what thou wilt do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure. Until with thee I will one will to do and to endure. Oh, breathe on me, breath of God. I am holy thine Until this earthly part of me Glows with thy fire divine Breathe on me, breath of God. So shall I ne never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Now listen to me. All of you who are raising your hand, please, if you're really serious, we're going to sing that hymn again. I want you to meet me at the altar and I'll ask Venerable Whisker to please join me. If you're really serious, you want to hand over your life to Jesus. I know some of you will drop your hands now. It means you are not serious. As we sing this in, breathe on me, breath of God. Give me a new life. Just take your steps to the altar and we will pray together. If you're outside, please give them chance, ushers, let them come in. Everywhere you are, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Please come, please come, please come. Let's sing that. Oh, breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. That I may love what thou dost love. And do what thou wilt do. Oh, breathe on me, breath of God. Until my heart is pure. Until my heart is pure. Yes, give them chance. Give them chance from.
the overflow our side please come in until we be i will want we to do and to endure in the name of jesus if you're joining us you must run now we're about to pray now those of you here i want you to use your mouth to tell jesus say please forgive my sins confess them to him the ones you can remember ask him to transform your life and nature tell him you don't want to collect things you want the life of the potter and i want you to repeat after me lord jesus thank you for speaking to me and thank you for dying for me this morning i confess that i am not been living right please forgive my sins today i ask you wash me clean with your precious blood cancel my name from the books of the devil write my name in your book of life place your stamp of ownership and authority over my life i give you the permission as the potter mold me into the vessel that you desire satan i reject you every covenant that i made with you or was made on my behalf knowingly or unknowingly i break them today i have no more business with you from today onwards i belong to jesus thank you jesus holy spirit the owner of the church the power of the church these souls are hereby committed to you take over from here they have nothing to do with the past any longer make way for them to progress in this spiritual work in the name of jesus i've just prayed for you the spirit of god will go out with you and see you through this journey you will not lost out you will not miss the kingdom you will not end in hell it is well with you in jesus name okay you are blessed